In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the stupidest mistakes that I make in Power BI over and over and over again. Every single time I make these mistakes, I want to kick myself on the butt. After watching the video, if you share the same feeling, let me save you some butt kicks. Let's start. Stupid mistake number one. Let's just say that I built this visual year and the quarter in the slicer and then months over year in the rows right here. And against that, I drag my total sales and I see that every single row is the same value. Now you could scratch your head and figure out what's going wrong in five hours or you can just check the relationships. Whenever you see the numbers repeating and they are just not changing and they are the same value, it's most likely that you have forgotten to build the relationships. Otherwise, the numbers are going to be blank. They're not going to be appealing. They're going to be incorrect perhaps, but not the same. This simply means the data is not being filtered and the numbers therefore are the same. So now if I just go back to the model view, you can see that we have the calendar table and we have the sales table and clearly I have missed the relationship creation between the two tables. And of course I can just go in here and I can take a look at my date, drag the date over to the date column right here. The relationship is created many to one, good to go. That's good. And now if I go back and take a look at my numbers, they are all good. Stupid mistake number two. And in my early days, I cannot even imagine how many times have I fallen for this. Remember, measures return single value, but if you try to commit them as a table, they are obviously going to give you errors. Let me show you what do I mean. So let's just say that you're trying to create a measure and in the measure, you just go write something. So I'm just going to write maybe high value sales, right? And now if you try to think about the logic, you say something like, hey, I'm just trying to filter my sales table and I'm just trying to go in the sales table and just trying to pick up the unit price and pick up all the prices of the products which are above a thousand dollars that's what you're trying to do as soon as you do that this looks good and it is correct and if you press enter this is going to give you an error now it doesn't even want it to be dragged to the visual it gives you the error right here itself because what you have done is you have created a table inside of a measure and the measure necessarily needs a scalar or a single value it's a table and a table cannot be fit into a measure so you need to do something with the table all of the rows of the table which are beyond thousand dollars and you need to wrap them up aggregate them up so you can do a count rows you can do a sum of the table you can do whatever of the table but don't leave the table just like that now if i happen to just maybe write the count rows function just want to find out how many rows are there this measure is just going to work fine but do not leave your measures with table expressions measures are scalar values quick introduction in the video in case you're liking the video so far and you're wondering that how can i learn these skills of writing good DAX? Code data modeling, the M language behind Power Query, and all of the nuances of Power BI that makes it work. I have brilliant courses on Power BI, especially the Power Query part, the DAX part, data modeling part, and the M language part. In the courses, I take you from a beginner level and take you to more advanced concepts, try to explain you the logic of how things are working so that you feel confident in applying the learnings to even on your own data sets. Hundreds and hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, the link for the courses is going to be down in the description of the video. Let's get back to the video. Here is another one that has caused me a lot of pain and agony while debugging my DAX problems just to find out that I just did not plug the instrument. I mean, it's as simple as that. Please take a look. So I've got this simple visualization, which is I have categories and I have sales of those categories and I'm trying to find the category mix. That means what is this particular value divided by the total gives me as a percentage, which is a very standard calculation. And I go ahead and write a measure for that. My measure is something like this. I take my total sales. Okay. I divide the sales by the total of the category, which is total sales by remove filters of the product and the category. And this is by the way, just the right measure. It's been working fine. I have learned it. It's working fine. But at the moment when I drag this off to my visual, it gives me a hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent all the way through till the end. Now what's going wrong? A lot of times you would not realize that while in the development process, you could tend to drag the wrong column in the visual. And through that, the filter that you're removing, off in the DAX calculation does not get removed. Let me show you what do I mean. If you actually take a look at the visual and in the visual, if you click on the thing right here, you're going to see that the category that I have is not coming from the products table like it should, as my measure also suggests. So if I just maybe take a look right here, this is actually coming off from my sales table as a category. For some reason, the category is also mentioned in the sales table and that is where it's being dragged from. Now, this could be a genuine mistake. I did not intend to do it. I just saw the category and I dragged it. Now my calculation is not working. 
So before you start going down in the rabbit hole to fix your DAX, please just check where the columns are coming from. Are they coming from the right tables or not? Now, if I happen to replace that and if I say, hey, this is not the correct category column that I would want, I would want it from the products tables. If I just make a click right here, as soon as I do that, you can see that it just gets fixed. It's all good now. That's it. Here is another one of the innocuous mistake, but it is deadly. Take a look at this particular visual that I've made. I've got the colors and I've got the total sales. Just a while ago on the previous page, I saw that my sales of the all categories was about 11 million. And if I'm just trying to find out sales against the colors, of course, the colors are going to be different, but the total sales should match 11 million, but it's not. So I wonder what's going on. A lot of times you're going to find that you have unnecessary filters applied that are hidden behind the bookmarks or somewhere on the page which are not visible to you. So if I maybe take a look at this particular thing, there is an icon up on the top, which is the filters icon. It literally was the filters icon. It changed it now to this. It doesn't look like a filter icon, but please hover your mouse on top of this icon and you'd be surprised what filters are applied to your visual through which the numbers are seeming incorrect. So if I just maybe hover my mouse on top of that, you're going to see that a few subcategories are excluded. I don't know where the filter is. It's all blank right here in the page, but I can see that few subcategories are excluded. A couple of things that you can do is you can build a new visual on a new page just to negate any kind of filters that might be there. You can look for hidden filters. Somebody must have created a bookmark or hidden the filter, or you can also take a look at the filter pane. So I have turned that off. Let me just turn that on. So I can go over to the view. In the view, I can just maybe turn on the filters pane. And if I just take a look inside of the filters pane, you can see that the subcategory are applied right here, which I do not really want. If I just cancel them out, the sales is back to the value that I needed. So look for the hidden filters. And the best way to look for those, those filters are this particular hover, where you can take a look at are any filters applied to this visual, which may be wanted, sometimes are not wanted as well. Another very common mistake that I have found myself making is that when you are creating some calculation and the calculation is not giving you the expected answer, please, by all means, apply those filters physically on the data inside of Power BI and please take a look that the data exists or not. If the data does not exist, it clearly gives you an indication that the data was lost in the ETL layer. The next logical step is that you go back to the data, perhaps in the CSV or the Excel file and apply a filter over there. Is the data existing over there or not? If the data exists in the Excel file and does not exist in the Power BI, there must be something that you might have done in Power Query so that the data was filtered out. And please look for such errors where you just check the validation or the existence of the data itself. And you'll be surprised how many times you will save yourself from nasty debugging. Another very common problem that a lot of people get stuck with and the Power BI community is filled with questions as such, which is incorrect totals of the matrix or the table visualization. The thing is that every single value value in the table or the matrix is evaluated as per the context and the total, although it looks like a total, but it's not the sum of the rows. So whenever you're in the developer mode and trying to create calculations, it's imperative that you please take a look at every single value, including the totals, which is typically what your bosses are going to see first. Take a look at the totals and match it to the totals row or not. Now, I've done videos in the past where I have spoken about this particular problem. Why does it go wrong? And also giving you some fixes around it. Please go take a look at that video in case you have not been able to do work around with totals in the past and you've struggled with that. The next most common mistake are the stupid blank values that you get in Power BI. Now, it might not be your problem as a developer of the report, but it could be just the data inconsistencies. And this is called referential integrity, where something is there in the sales fact table or just the fact table and is not there in the products table. Now, take a look at right here. I've got the simple visual and somehow there's a blank right here against which the 10 is appearing. And I do not understand that where does this 10 come from? What the heck is this blank? It is very likely that your sales table contains a few values which are missing from your products table. So what I can do is I can just go over one of the easiest ways to check it. I can just go over to the sales table. In the sales table, I can just right click and I can just make a temporary column for the just a quick second. And I'm just going to go inside of this column. I'm going to write a VLOOKUP and I'm going to get the product key from the products table and find out if there are any inconsistencies or not. Close the bracket and I'm just going to go and 
filtered in the blank value in right here. So click on this, click on OK. And there is one such row where the product key is one, no order number, no date. The quantity is two, the unit price is five, and we have nothing against it. And that's the reason why two into five is 10 was the value that I was getting. And that's the reason why we were getting that blank value. Please check for such values. If they are, just maybe notify of the data team or you just correct the data. And now you know that why those blanks appear in your Power BI reports. My last stupid mistake that I have committed a lot of times is not applying proper data types in Power Query, which has caused my calculations to break. Let me show you what do I mean. At the moment, against the month, I'm seeing total sales, but I also want to see sales delivered. That means, okay, uh, this is the value of the sales that was sold in the month of January. How much of that sales was delivered? So I'm going to find some value right here. So for which I'm just going to go maybe build a relationship between the delivery date and the date right here, which is going to be an inactive relationship, many to one, good to go. Uh, that is done. And now I will use the calculate function and activate this particular relationship. So I'm going to come in right here. I'm going to make a new measure. I'm going to call this as delivered sales. And I will write a simple calculate function. And I'll say, hey, I'm still trying to calculate my total sales. So that, but the relationship that you should run is the relationship between the calendar table and the delivery date, which is right here. Close the bracket and close the bracket and press enter. Uh, if I drag that off to my visual, it just gives me blank. Now I'm wondering what the heck happened. Now, if I just go take a look at my delivery date, which is right here, it seems fine. There is no problem at all. The only problem is that if you take a look, this one is left aligned and this one is actually a right aligned date. Now, if you just even click on the date column right here, it's going to show you that this column has been marked as a date. And if you click right here, this column has been marked as a text. And this is absolutely not right. Now, once the relationship, which is between the calendar table and this particular column, the date table is coming through, it's not able to find any single value because these are texts. And in the calendar table, what you have is a date. So the Vero cup is not working. The relationships are not working. And if they're not working, they're just giving you blank. That's it. So what do we do about this? We just actually go back to Power Query and take a look at the data type. You can also mark the data type right here in Power BI, but let's just go back to the source and correct the data type. So this is where I have calculated my delivery date. And within the formula only, I will declare my data type as a type and I will call this as date. Press enter. Now this actually becomes a date. If I now click on close and apply, come back. And this just takes a while to load the data. Good. This seems like a date. Date is good. I come back and here is my delivered sales. So please check for data types. I've got another very interesting video on excellent pivot table tricks that you might not have seen before. I would love for you to watch that next. I'll see you in that one. Cheers.